As we know, every NFL season, there's always this one team that surprises everyone and is actually good. Today's video, we're going to take a look at what Colin Cowher said about what he thinks the Washington Commanders are going to do in the 2024 season. Let's talk about it. I feel left. What I want. Get back slow. I love the way she rock I love the way she move it, move it, shake it on me. When she cry for him, the shawty is the winner. You can tell that shawty love again. I just got with it. I love the way she move it. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We end the Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with the video where we're going to be talking about what Colin Cowher said about the Washington Commanders. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. Again, one road to 8K subscribers. So I hopefully appreciate it if you guys can subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get straight to it. So, Colin Cowherd had something to say that is going to surprise a lot of you all about the Washington Commanders. Let's waste no more time. Listen to what he had to say, and I'm going to give you my, my synopsis when he's finished. Philadelphia, easily the best roster in the division. Nick Sariani, did he hire better assistants? They started last year 10-1. and one. Then they fell off a cliff. I think they rebound. Maybe not a Super Bowl team, but very good. I'm going to go with Washington. New coach, new OC, new quarterback, new owner. I think they use that energy and juice to catapult. I think they're the surprise team in the NFL Washington second. Dallas is a very viable third, but I think they're top heavy and overly dependent on Dak and CeeDee Lamb to carry the entire offense. Giants. Just not good enough at quarterback. I pick him for Philadelphia. So right there, Colin Cowher was giving his NFC East predictions for the 2024 season. And honestly, Colin Cowher really gets a lot of backlash because for most of the time that we hear him talk, it's always nonsense. He's never coming with facts. Um, he's always saying something crazy. And a lot of people don't like listening to his show because it's not necessarily a good watch. However, this time, speaking on the commander's behalf, he actually said something that isn't too bad. And I'm not just saying that just because I'm a commander's fan, but for the reasons he stated why he gave us the second in the NFC East. When you look at the Eagles, obviously, they're still the best team in the end division. Some can argue the Cowboys if you want, but it's it's clearly the Eagles. Yes, they had a slump headed into the last um, finishing strong on uh, finishing last season however when you look at the overall talent on both sides of the ball aj brown jalen hurts devonta smith like even the defense you can't argue with that as far as the overall talent that does not necessarily mean that they cannot be beat i argue that we should have beat them twice last year with the incompetent head coach incompetent offensive coordinator a young quarterback that was really good at that time i felt like we should have swept them However, we didn't. So just because they're the best team headed into the season doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot be beat. Then he goes to the commanders and says, basically, the reason why he believes the commanders are going to be the number two pick, number two team in the division is because of a breath of fresh air. New everything, new everything in Washington is why he believes Washington is going to be second in the division. And I can't necessarily disagree with that. See, if we had a rookie coach, if this wasn't Dan, if this is Dan Quinn's first rodeo, if he would, didn't have his track record that he had in Dallas with the defense, with Atlanta and the head coach leading them to an NFC Championship and a Super Bowl appearance, and um, argue can say that they should have won, uh, but they didn't, unfortunately, 28-3. Uh, he had a good stint in Seattle, too, with the Legion of Boom. If he did not have that track record and this is a rookie head coach, then... I would be like, okay, you know what? Maybe Washington is going to be, you know, a little bit behind the wheel because we have a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. May not work. However, we have a veteran head coach getting the second opportunity, chomping at the bit for the second opportunity, brings in a, a general manager that really knows what he's doing, and a general manager actually wanted Dan Quinn. He handpicked Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn was his guy, per Mark Ian, partial owner of the Washington Commanders, said today that, Adam Peters picked Dan Quinn. You go out and get a young quarterback. You go out and address holes in free agency, bringing in veteran leaders like Bobby Wagner. And granted, it's not Bobby Wagner from prime Bobby Wagner. However, 
you still bring him in. You bring in Ken Norton Jr. You bring in uh, uh, Bob Joe Witt Jr. Almost called him Bobby Witt. God, MLB is always on my mind. <laughs> uh, Joe Witt Jr. Uh, you, you have a complete overhaul. Like yesterday, Jason Wright is no longer the president of the team. So he's right. From top to bottom, there is a complete wipeout and a complete fresh start for the Commanders. And that alone could boost them to have a really successful 2024 season. Now, you're probably like, Juan, what is considered a successful 2024 season for you? Me personally, and this is just me personally, it's the development of Jaden Daniels. I don't care if we win 11, 10, 12, 13. Of course, that's what I want. I don't care if we win no, that many games or if we win 6, 7, 8, 5 games. As long as Jaden Daniels shows me he is the franchise, and we're going to move forward with him. I could care less about how this specific season turns out. Because next year, I honestly believe, is the year where we can strike. Because we'll be able to get more free agents, i.e. Brandon Ayuk, as being one of the main ones. Maybe T. Higgins. I'm not sure. Unless, you know, Cincinnati contract extends him for the next season. Obviously, I believe he's gonna be he's gonna play on a franchise tag this year. So unless they are unless they um plan on fran um extending him if they didn't already, T. Higgins another name out there that could be on that could be on the market. I think next year is when we strike. But it, again, it would not surprise me if this is the year where Washington surprises some people and have a Texans like year. Now I know a lot of people don't like making that comparison because they say Juan, the Texans were in the AFC South. They did not have a they they did not have to go through what we have to go through with the NFC East. That is true. However, if you look at our team compared to their team, I honestly say we have similar talent. Now of course this year they added Stefan Diggs. They added some other pieces. But going into their rookie year, let's be for real. It was Tank Dell, Noah Brown, uh, Nico Collins. Who expected Nico Collins to explode how he did this year? Who expected Tank Dell to come onto the scene like he did this year? Who knew Bobby Slook was uh, this offensive genius? Now, I know, I'm sure there are some people out there that knew that. I knew Nico Collins was really good, but I didn't expect CJ Stroud to elevate his gameplay like how he did. So, essentially, what I'm saying is if the pieces are around you are good, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie. It doesn't matter if you're a three-year, five-year, ten-year vet. If the pieces around you are good and the situation is good for you, you can come in and make an immediate impact. So why can't Jaden Daniels do that? It doesn't matter if he's in the NFC East. It doesn't matter. There were tough games during that during the Texas stretch last year, and they prevailed. The divisional round, um, you know, they made it to the divisional round, that wild card game. They made it to the playoffs. Playoffs are always tough no matter who is in it. So, again, it doesn't matter what division you're in. If you know how to play ball, if you're good, if your team is good, if you're coached well, if you're well prepared, you can come out on top regardless of what year it is for your, your, your rebuild or revamp situation. That's what Colin Coward had to say about the commanders, and I can't say I disagree. I want to take a second to pause today's video and tell you guys about today's sponsor. Today's video and all videos moving forward will be sponsored by SeatGeek. Do you want to go to a concert or a sporting event coming up? Well, SeatGeek is the place for you as they put all the great tickets all into one application for you to afford. And right now, you can use the promo code WANGATI to get $20 off your first purchase. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as you use it, and the more you use it, that can transition from $20 off first purchase to $10 off every time you use my code. And you can use it more than once. But we got to start using this $20 promo code first so Siggy can know Juan Gotti's fan base is coming strong with this promo code so then we could change that promo code to 10% off every time we get on that job. So go ahead, punch in $20 off. Um, get your $20 off promo code Juan Gotti on SeatGeek right now. Don't waste time. Do it while it's hot and do it while you can because we know the commander season is coming up. And again, if you already paid for a ticket, but you don't want to pay that crazy amount for parking, that promo code works for parking too. So get $20 off your parking if you want. All right. So back to the video. Colin Cowherd again says commanders are going to finish second in the division behind the Eagles. The reasoning I just gave prior to the prior to the break. Now let's talk about the other two teams before we get out of here. He has the Cowboys finishing third. 
and is the Giants finishing last? See, the Cowboys, they I I I agree again. They are too Dak involved, if you if you get what I'm trying to say. Like years past has constantly shown you, especially on playoff time, that Dak can't get it done on his own. You can't get it done on the shoulders of Dak. Is it time to move on from Dak? A lot of people believe so. But Dak Prescott wants another contract. Are you in a position to where you can pay Dak Prescott another contract when you have CeeDee Lamb who wants money, when you have Michael Parsons who wants money, and you have other holes that you need to figure out? I don't know. Me personally, I feel like Dak Prescott is good, but at a point in time... This story has gotten old. Year in and year out, the Cowboys are a regular season team that is always good in the regular season. But every year in the postseason, they are never successful. It's been like that under the Dak Prescott tenure the whole time since 2016 since he took over. They can't get over the hump. So at what point do you move on from Dak Prescott and start over? So I agree with that point. And then the Giants, the reason why they're finishing fourth is just... I think they invested too much into their quarterback as well. I think they paid the wrong person. I think they should have paid Saquon Barkley. Daniel Jones, um, uh, quite frankly, is not good. This is the last year of his of his uh of his opportunity there in, in New York. They just paid him, but they're moving on from him if he can't show anything this year. They got him a weapon in Malik Neighbor. So maybe that maybe it could be different this year. Um, but I just think the Giants overall talent wise. It's it's a huge gap from Eagles, Giants. I would say even Commanders, Gi uh, Giants. That doesn't, again, that doesn't mean that they can't beat us. But I also think that is dead too now that we have a competent coach. Uh, but the Giants, I just don't think they have enough. I don't. And I think their coach, Brian Dable, is a better offensive coordinator than he is head coach. So I think uh, him and Daniel Jones could be on the hot seat this year, more specifically Daniel Jones. Uh, they wanted Jaden Daniels too. So that goes to show you that that front office doesn't necessarily believe in Daniel Jones, but they realize they invested too much into him to give up on him this season. But they wanted Jaden Daniels. They wanted to trade off for Jaden Daniels. So the Giants, for me, just doesn't have enough, and I do think they're going to finish fourth this year. And Colin Cowherd believes the Washington Commanders are going to finish second. So let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section, though. How do you feel about Colin Cowherd's statements on the Washington Commanders finishing second in the NFC East behind the Eagles and in front of the Giants and Cowboys? As always, being boy one, got you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. One road to 8,000 subscribers. We greatly appreciate if you can reach that goal as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Have a blessed one. Stay safe. Peace.